I had a question about what exactly do network statements do and how do they operate. I find that a lot of people just learning Cisco and even some who have been working with it for a while still get a teeny bit confused on how the network statement operates. Here's what we're going to do. We have this router R1. It has four loopback interfaces. As you know, loopback interfaces are logical interfaces. They're free. They come included and you can use them for lots of purposes here. We're going to use these loopback interfaces as logical interfaces for the purpose of learning. So that's a great application for them. These four loopbacks, loopback one, let me introduce them to you. We have the IP address of 10.64.2.3 on the interface with a slash 24 bit mask, which would be 255.255.255.0 in decimal. Why do we use decimal? Because we're human. We got 10 digits and uh, it's convenient for us to work with decimal. We'll leave IPv6 for another day. So this is host number three on the 10.64.2 subnet or network. And then we have loopback 2. It has 10.0.0.2 configured and the first 12 bits are for the network. The last remainder bits of the 32, which would be I think 20, are host bits. Loopback 3 has the first 30 bits being used for the subnet and the last two bits available for host bits. And loopback 4 has 172.16.2.9 uh, with a 16-bit mask, which would be 255.255.0.0 in decimal. I would encourage you to take a moment, jot down this information, because we're going to refer to it as we configure the network statements starting right now. Let me bring you over to a router. You can do this on Dynamips, GNS3, a standalone device. You don't need a whole bunch of network gear to do this. So let's just verify our interfaces right here. Let's do a show, um, let's do a show run section interface and we'll just verify the IP addresses. So if you want to at this point you can pause it, take a look at your drawing that you just drew up and make sure that the IP addresses match. Also, make sure you're comfortable that the masks, you know, of 255, 255, 255 correspond to slash 24 and that you're comfortable with that. So we have four different interfaces. If we do a show IP protocols, we can verify that we're not running any IGP routing protocols yet. And we're not running BGP either for that matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to run EIGRP. We'll go into configuration mode and we'll simply specify router EIGRP autonomous system 1. Perfect. I'm also going to do a no auto summary just because I always do no auto summary unless there's a, a business or task that calls for it. So let's go ahead and add these interfaces into EIGRP. How do we do it? Well, if we want to add the first interface of 10.64.2.3 in, there's a couple ways of doing it. We could type in network 10 .64.2.3 with a wildcard mask and the wildcard mask would say hey any it's like somebody taking role like a person in a large group of people saying hey I'm looking for anybody who has the first 32 bits that's all there is in IPv4 of 10.64.2.3 if that's you I'll press enter here you belong to EIGRP1 that's how it works. It's just roll call. Now, what the actual mask is on the actual interface doesn't matter at this point. All this is doing is including that network or that interface, I should say, inside of EIGRP. If we do a do show IP EIGRP interface, check it out. We've got that one interface. He's in. If we take the network statement out, I'll just put a no, and we do a show again. Now there's no interfaces. So network statements qualify. Now, how could we get the two interfaces that both start with 10 in with one statement? Simple. Check this out. We could say network 10.0.0.0. And here's the guy. When you put a network statement in, I want you to think of a guy shouting out, hey, I'm looking for somebody who has the IP address of. And if I say zero for the wildcard mask, that's the announcer saying, I'm looking for somebody who has 10 in the first octet because that's what I put right here was a value of 10. And if I say, I don't care about the remainder, I could put in this. And what that means is that I don't care what the second or third or fourth octet is of your IP address. If your first octet is 10, boom, you're in EIGRP1. And we can verify that with a do show IP EIGRP interface command and check it out. We got both loopback one and loopback two because they both start with 10. 
Now we have two other interfaces that are involved. We have the Loopback 3 with a 24 network and we have Loopback 4 with a 172 network. We could carry this one step further. I'm going to take off the network statement and I could do this. I could say network 0000. zero, zero, zero. And you're saying, wait, Keith, nobody has that. But check it out. Look at the wildcard mask. If we say, I don't care, this is like the guy shouting in the audience, hey, anybody who has a name, <laughs> you're an EIGRP1 because I don't care what the actual value is of the first octet or the second octet or the third octet or the fourth octet. You're in. So basically with that wildcard, if we do a do show IP EIGRP interface, we got all four of them. Now, once interfaces are inside EIGRP, then they will start advertising and EIGRP will start advertising the literal networks that those interfaces belong to based on their IP address and the mask. So the network statement is simply a qualifier. Who's in? Once they're in, then the actual literal network links that they have on those interfaces will start to be advertised. And that's how it works with network statements. So. Remember two things. One, when you put a network statement in a routing protocol, think of it as a, an announcer in a large auditorium looking for individuals. A command like this, he's looking for any interfaces that begin with 10, don't care about the rest. With a command like this, he's looking for anybody who has the exact match of the first octet of 10, second octet of 64, third octet of 2, fourth octet of 3, because the wildcard mask in this example on the screen says uh, it has to match. I care about every single bit of the entire 32-bit address. And that, my friends, will assist you greatly in your journey towards a CCNA or any time you're working with IGPs. The same concept holds true with OSPF and EIGRP. With RIP, unfortunately, with RIP, it doesn't understand how to do any kind of wildcard masks in a statement. So it, with RIP, you're going to put in classful boundaries, you know, class A, the first octet, class B, first and second octet, class C, first, second, and third octet, and it's going to include everybody who matches. And then you might have to do some passive interface commands to filter out the rest. Thanks for the question, and hope you enjoyed it, and best wishes in your studies.